Sunday night chat, uh, just this past week, right? Some things in the news. I watched a movie, which made me think about some stuff. I might have a bit of a scowl on my face. I'm in pain. Um, I got this issue with my foot. It's a gout thing. I'm, I'm pretty certain of it. It's interesting. First of all, I don't need any advice. All right. Um, <laughs> I've done a lot of research on this. I know what I'm dealing with. I've rehabbed it over the last several years. And I know now why it flares up, right? It's what I'm eating. <clears throat> but it's not what you, if you go and you look it up right now, you'll see, they'll say it's a rich diet with meat and seafood. But if you read more than one, this is the thing, most people, they'll click on something that they're looking for, they'll read one article, and then that's it. You gotta read multiple articles from multiple different sources, and you'll start picking up on other little things that are in there because the people a lot of these medical things they're i believe they're giving you the wrong information on purpose i'm a this is a conspiracy theory of mine you know what i gotta make myself a really cool tinfoil hat to wear like whenever i start doing this sort of thing just grab it and put it on for you <laughs> um i've talked about it before the, the the materials we put up against our body right if it's not a natural material like cotton silk or wool you know, it's a petroleum-based product, that's leaching into your skin. Um, the water you're drinking, I have a filter system that's a pH thing that keeps the pH right and keeps the minerals in the water but f supposedly filters out all the crap and the, and the chlorine and, and, and the, um, what's the other stuff? The fluoride and all that. Um, you, you just, you want to eat real food. That's all that is. For me, eating meat or eating seafood, I never get a flare-up from that. I've been eating meat every night of the week for decades. Well, yeah, pretty much. And at, once I start incorporating this diet that I've got where I'm eating eggs and meat and everything, I'm much healthier, much leaner, all of it. When I get a flare-up in my foot, it's when I actually stray from that and I add garbage. Uh snacky stuff, sugary stuff. And so that's what the problem is. And <clears throat> you'll read it in there. You'll see it'll mention like fructose, like, you know, fruit sugars. I don't think eating fruit necessarily will do it, but it's the, it's fructose, high fructose, corn syrup, corn syrup, and sugar, which is the enemy. It's poison. You really need to cut it out of your diet. And like a month or so ago, I was doing great because I dropped some weight, like I dropped at least 10 pounds or more when I did the camping trip. And then I came back and I was maintaining that. And then now I'm working on this project. You guys have been seeing pictures of it. We'll talk about that in a little bit too. Um, this is a friend of mine. She's cool. She's a little kooky sometimes. And, you know, we all have our issues. And it's tough with her. I love her as a human being. She just doesn't shut the fuck up, man. It's just a constant da 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 She's not the only person like that. But I've purposely not been talking around her like, for the last several days just to get that through to her. But I've also been annoying, annoyed by the pain in my foot because it's, it's hard to even walk. But I still got to work. And the, the deal was, was that she, to get me over there, uh, we had this deal. Like she was going to feed me and she's a good cook. She was a chef and all that. And... Um, and help me if I needed it, like hold this or hand me something kind of thing. So, but she's physically not in great shape. And so you guys saw like the first week I was over there, th two different guys came on two different days that she paid because she thought I could use the help. And she got pissed because she was paying them. They were standing around not doing anything. So I told her, as I told them, I don't really need you to do anything. I work alone. I work for myself. We're going to get into this, too, when I'm talking about the projects. I got a lot of weird comments and questions about this. I work alone, and I can pretty much figure out how to do anything on my own alone. It takes a little extra time, but that's just what I'm used to doing. And, like, the guys that she had come by, one guy helped because he was a big guy when I was placing some beams, which I could have done on my own. I've done it before. Second guy came by. He did a couple things for me while I was doing something else. And he put all the brackets up, which he put one of them on the wrong side of the line. Fortunately, I caught that and had to move it. <laughs> so I didn't really need their help. 
but the the problem is that what she's feeding me sometimes isn't healthy and she has a lot of sugar in the house and she's got snacks in the house and I have no self-control. All right. So if I get some sugar in me, it's a, it's like cocaine or something. It's a drug and I, I want more of it. If it's there, I'm going to eat it. That's why I don't have any in my house. I have no junk food in the house. I can't have it. Even when I buy healthy snacks that taste good, that satisfy that sweet tooth. Trader Joe's has these bananas like they're like little mini tiny chewy bananas, the yellow package. Oh my God, I eat those things like candy. I could eat the whole package like that. Um, but at least that's good for you, a lot of potassium and everything else. So I remember like two weeks ago, I think it was, I was leaving her place and she had this thing, that had, it was iced tea. It was in a store-bought container, but she had rosemary in it. She was adding stuff too. So I thought it was like some healthy concoction she was making. She's like, oh, you want some? I'm like, oh yeah, it looks good. Because I saw the rosemary in it. And she poured it in a glass and I took a big gulp and I was like, oh, I put it down. It was, there was so much sugar in it. I was like, what did you do? Do you have much sugar? She goes, oh, no, no, that's the store-bought stuff. I'm just adding. I'm like, why are you drinking that? It's poison. It was like, literally, it was as if you took a whole cup of, like this thing full of sugar, dumped it into a glass of water with some lemon and some rosemary and shook that up. That's what I got. And it was so disgusting to my system. I mean, the whole way home, I was sick to my stomach. I was sick to my stomach all into the next morning. I hardly slept. My teeth hurt. I think that was the jump off for me. And then like two weeks ago, my schedule was so messed up. I didn't buy the stuff I normally buy to make my stew for a week. So for a week, I wasn't doing my normal thing or the better part of a week. I think it was like three or four days. I think it was four days. So I was eating. I had some frozen like pot stickers from Trader Joe's, which is easy because when I come home after work all day in the heat and everything, I'm not going to go shopping at that point. So I'm eating what I have. So I think the combination of my diet getting thrown off and then snacking on little cookies and stuff and then her sugary drink thing. Like she gave me a, she's been pretty good. She's been fine like sugar-free stuff, but every once in a while she slipped. She gave me this um, Gatorade one morning too, several days ago. And I drank that. I was like, oh, why that's, she's like, oh no. It's just, so it's just, I've been eating sugar again. <clears throat> I've been, I've been poisoned. I'm being poisoned by this bitch. <laughs> She's fucking poisoning me. I think, you know, I get this from people that don't believe you when you tell them stuff, so they want to test you. I'm not saying that she's doing that, maybe subconsciously. It's same thing with my hearing when I was on the movie sets, and I used to always, I always do, I still do. I have the big muffs I put on for hearing protection, um, and I would tell the people around me, just tell me before so I could put it on. Because if I'm exposed to a loud, my ears are ringing right now as I'm talking to you. It's an extremely annoying thing. I just tune it out. But if I don't put my hearing protection on and then there's a loud sound near me, uh, it'll trigger this thing in my system where then the hearing in my ears gets much louder and it could last for a week or two weeks at this louder decibel inside my head. It's extremely annoying. And people would test me on that because they didn't believe me. And I think that that's what's maybe going on here, too. I don't know. But it's been a real bummer for, like, the last three days. It's very hard to walk. And tomorrow, at 8 o'clock, i got to be at the VA. They want to look at my ankles. And so I'm bringing my medical records with me. And I'll talk to the doctor about that at the time. I'm going to ask them some questions of whether or not I can actually get medical from the VA because nobody said anything to me about that yet. I don't know if i got to sign up or what, but I'll find this out tomorrow. Uh, right now, they're just checking me out for the disability claims. So we'll see how this whole thing works out. But this is a serious issue. Um, I think the more research I've done, it could, that could be brought on by an injury combined with a poor diet, which makes sense. Because I remember several years ago when this first started happening, four or five years ago, it was like just beet red and inflamed. And I, it was very, very painful. But I was wearing the wrong shoes for a long time. And my toe, this toe started moving in. I was developing this bunion. And all that happened at the same time. And I, which I'm looking for, I can't find it. But I've got one of those things called a stint machine. It's basically these, elect, these pads you put on your, anywhere on your body. And you plug it in and then sends electrical impulses and twitches everything. And by doing that, I reduced my inflammation in this foot. And then it took about two years, but I could eventually get to the point where I could grab my toe. Ooh, there it went. And I could pull. First, I was able to pop this joint, but eventually I got it to where this first metatarsal, so I could pop that one. When, the first time I did that, it was glorious. Oh, it was so wonderful. It just felt so good. So even though it hurts, 
a lot. I'm still doing that. And I'm trying to do that at night and I do this and I pull on, I pull it back and I push in on it and I rack it around and I just, you know, I grin and bear the pain because I believe that manipulating the joint and forcing it the way that I do is helpful. Maybe I'm wrong, but I find that it eventually goes away. Anyhow, this is a big deal for me. It's it's just, it's screwed up my mood for the last several days, and I'm grumpy. <laughs> and I don't like being grumpy. You guys don't often see me grumpy here. People in my life who've known me have seen me grumpy. I don't like being grumpy. <laughs> so the job is going really well. It's done. Like the maid, I gave her a price <clears throat> to do what I've done, but it wasn't supposed to include the decking. That was something, if you guys have been following... My initial plan was to put the tin on. You know, I've not put tin on before. I've seen it done. I figured I can build anything. It can't be that difficult. And I did my framing, 24 inches on center. And then I made the mistake of laying the, the, the metal down upside down. doesn't matter. You can put it in either direction. But the way I was doing it, it was only 21 and a half inches on center at the low point where you'd screw to a rafter. And I thought, shit, now we have to put decking, which... After I put two pieces on, I felt how flim flimsy it was. I knew I'd either need decking or I would need to put like some one by threes across all the decking, which would make even more sense, actually. And then I thought about the way that would look from underneath. I thought, you know, it's going to be too busy. Like, I like the idea of just having rafters in the metal, but it was bothering me. Once I explained it to her, she's like, well, you know, I, she'd be okay with putting some decking down. And the day before we'd been at the Home Depot, we saw this, it's like T111. It's an exterior plywood that looks like vertical boards with a little gap between each one. And so they had that product there and it was already pre-primed in gray. And in my mind, she doesn't like it, uh, the gray. That's what she's telling me. But this is a, a crazy person. I love her. She's my friend. She can't agree with your ideas. It has to be her idea. She has to have the initial thought. It has to be the way she wants it. And I deal with that a lot with people. Uh, most people that I know have that personality. I don't do a job for them because I know it can be a problem. But with her, it's a little bit different because we, we've been friends for so long. It's going to grow on her. She's going to love it. It's going to be fine. She loves the job. You know what I mean? But she just says, I don't like the gray. I like the gray. It looks perfect. There's no other better color. You guys, you know what? Let me insert a couple quick snapshots right here. Okay, sorry for that long, long pause there uh, before the snapshot. So you, a couple snapshots there just show you what that looks like. It's cool. looks great. And when that allowed me to place the the uh, the uh, the tin up there and screw it anywhere, <clears throat> but I also found three quarter inch uh, self tappers that'll go through the metal into that half inch plywood and with, between the metal and I put down thick um, uh, tar paper. They don't poke through, so it's that worked out awesome. But I flipped the panels over and I realized the tin, and they are set up for 24 inches on center on the last two end bottom ones if I would have flipped it over. I just didn't think to do that the first time. So everything's golden. Everything's done. The tin is on. She's asked me to do this other thing. She paid for the decking because that wasn't included in, our, in my initial bid. And it's extra labor for me that I'm not charging her extra for. I'm also building an end panel at the end of that <clears throat> porch on the one corner of her house, the opposite of where her back door is, it's going to go from the last post to the house and then from the last post about halfway to the next post. And that's going to be double-sided T111. I'm framing with a 2x6, 2x4 framing inner, and the panels will insert inside the 2x6. So it'll be nicely framed. It's going to look real sharp. And I'm not charging anything extra for that because she's my friend. And I did fine on this labor-wise. Um, it's just that it's just taken a lot of time because I'm usually out of there by like 2, 2.30 because it's just too hot by then. And I'm trying to beat the traffic. And I'm getting to her house before uh, by 7 or before 7 in the morning. So I'm getting up here at 5, getting my shit together. I got to drive over there. So 
you know, it's like six hour days and it's fine. I'm old, man. <laughs> and yes, I work alone. So I did a couple shorts. You see me loading that van. She tried to help. Um, and she helped me a little bit. Like when I put tin on the roof, she handed up the sheets to me and that sort of thing. But I didn't need her to do that. She was coming with me. She bought the panels uh, as far as the decking. So she had to come for that. And she likes to get out and look at other stuff at the store while I'm picking stuff and all that. And she could be helpful. But typically I'm alone doing that. So I've learned, I set the van up, I built the van in that way with that sort of build so that I can use it as my everything vehicle. It's my everything. It's my only vehicle. So it's my grocery getter, it's my go anywhere van, it's my camping van, it's my adventure van, it's my work van. You know, <clears throat> every once in a while that van is a rocking, so don't come a knocking. <laughs> it's my everything van. It's, just, it's a fun, fun van. <laughs> so. I know how to do it. So when you see some guy made a comment on the short where I was loading the plywood up on the roof of the van, he's like, oh, what, 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 your helper's filming it? That's stupid. No, a little lady, little old lady was filming it. I'm doing it myself, and that's how I do it all the time. As a matter of fact, I put every sheet by myself, a 4x8, half inch T111, up onto those rafters, off of a stepladder, Climbed up on there and set every one of those myself with no help from anybody. That's what I do. I've been doing this a long time. I know how to do it. I know how to do it safely. You know, I'm not overly rushing it. I'm taking my time. I'm engaging my core. I know what I'm doing with my body. I know my body very well. I know what I'm capable of. Later, it gets to 2 o'clock, 2.30, and I've been doing that all day, and it's over 100 degrees in the sun. I feel it. You know, if I slip a little bit or drop something off, I'm like, okay, you know what? It's time to stop for the day. I'll come back tomorrow. That's what you should do. You shouldn't push it when you start dropping things or making a little mistake or something. So, yeah, it looks good. I think I just included a picture of the tin up on the roof, got it to line up right. It's, it's golden. One, another thing that I didn't foresee because I'm not a roofer, and it's, I'm not, I've built plenty of porch covers before, but I've done them differently. I've done cedar shake roofs and things like that. It's going way back. I was doing this sort of thing you see me doing, I was doing. You know, when I was in my early 20s in New Jersey, at the Jersey Shore, outdoor showers, all kind of decks, everything, all kinds of cool stuff. So it's kind of a no-brainer to me. Um, anyhow, I'm happy with the way it turned out. It looks very good. She's happy. That's all that really matters. And I still got to do a couple more. She wants me to do more stuff over at her house. I'm taking a break this week. Because i got to make this thing for my buddy Phil. He's the guy that sent me the bumper, that rear bumper on the van. Um, which, you know, it was very gracious of him to send that all on his dime. Phil does well, <clears throat> so it's cool. He just wanted me to make him this insert for his back door for his Astro van like I have. A little kitchen. Problem is, he has the barn doors. We've been through this before. I've done several videos talking about it. i got the measurements I need now, so I'll get that done. And I want to dedicate this week to that. We'll see how far I get with distractions because I've been, it's been over four weeks, I think, over at Kirgi's just about every day. So there's a lot of things that have fallen behind for me over here. So we'll just see how that goes. Once I get that done for him, I'll go back to her house. I'll get the back, those panels on. And I might change my mind. I might decide to go over to her house this week and get those panels on so I don't have to think about it anymore. But then she's got some other things that she wants me to jump on. It's just, it's um, with the constant... Da, 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 and the, 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 the poisoning aspect with the sugar <laughs> and driving all the way. I've spent at least $400 on gas is my, the way I'm calculating it. I haven't actually put the pen to paper. If I do, I think it could turn out to be more than that. But I'm saying at least 400 bucks I spent on gas. you got to figure uh, with so many weeks in a row driving back and forth on the highway and then also when I'm there having to drive to Home Depot or something like that and, and it's not like it's around the corner over there so it's not fun for me you know we had this conversation actually I'm I live in an area right now where I really don't have to go beyond about three miles three to five miles from where I live and there's enough work for me right here uh, with affluent people uh, where I could do fine just sitting right here in my own backyard so it's, it's, it takes a lot to get me to go somewhere beyond five miles. <laughs> that includes dating. Speaking of, 
I ran into this woman that I, I knew a while ago and uh, she's got had some health issues that she's getting over and she's pretty cool. I'm going to call her after this. I think I might take her out. So if I do, I'll let you guys know. She's an actress. <laughs> you guys, or, you know, she used to be, you know, I guess she still could be if she wanted to be. But uh, interesting lady. So I, I, and, and I told her that I'd like to interview her because she's been in some interesting films and she has these interesting uh, stories with, you know, big time people in the business. And she was, you know, model, fashion person, all that when she was young. I think she was like Miss China USA or something or Miss Chinese California or something uh, in the 90s or something. So you guys will probably see her at some point, which will make a bunch of you happy because I'm getting this stuff from people all the time. You shouldn't be alone. You shouldn't be all alone. I'm fine. I've been alone since I was 14. <laughs> um, I... Uh, so I talked about going to uh, the VA a little bit, talked about the job a little bit. I talked about my foot with this gout thing, friggin' nightmare. Right now I'm putting pressure on the back part of the joint on my other foot and pushing and pushing on and pushing away. Feels, it's kind of relieving, so that's nice. I saw something on news the other day with Israel, huh? It, it, I'm just laughing at the news because they're stupid. The way that they try to make you think of, about something. They're saying it's a preemptive strike against Hezbollah in Lebanon. Uh, and they're like, they're, is this the right thing to do? Like, well, should they have waited for another attack from them? Because they had just taken their leader out and then they did this other preemptive strike. No, 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 no. That's the way you do it. Right now, I don't care what you think, by the way. You can type whatever you want in the comments below. But I don't care what you think <laughs> about this particular topic. I'm telling you. What they're doing is the right thing to do. I'm not even saying, you know, I'm not trying to even pick sides necessarily. I'm just saying there's video of me probably from 10 years ago or so, or I know for sure in the last four to six years, talking about things that happened well before that because it's the way I thought. Like when we first went over to Iraq, I never agreed with that. <clears throat> I agreed with going over there and taking people out. I never agreed with the way that they turned it into this giant corporate operated war. It was stupid. Building cities over there with McDonald's and everything else. What Israel's doing right now is they're showing the world how to do it right. And of course they couldn't do it if we weren't there to support them with military might. If you were to look at a map that would show you from Europe to India, you will see our fleet over there. Like we've got ships in the Mediterranean, the Red Sea, the Persian Gulf, uh, the Indian Ocean. Like we've got we got aircraft carriers, battleships, everything. We got them right just below Iraq there or Iran. You know, we're covering everything. Now, that's we could be doing this. This is what we should be doing, in my opinion. Just for the bad actors. I'm not talking about building up these countries or trying to get them to be democratic or anything. I'm saying, you know where the assholes are, kill them, period. Just do it. We know It's not like the jungles of Vietnam where you can't see through the canopy. They're in a fucking desert. All right, we got drones. We have so much crazy technology. We know when somebody goes to the bathroom whether they're shitting or pissing at this point, right? We know where they are. We know who they are. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. You, you send, you don't even need a land base, really. You could have a couple so that you have a place to stage maybe some armored vehicles, some LAVs or some tanks or something like that, maybe some artillery if you felt like you needed it. Just send the Marines in. You, you, okay, here's our target. Here's what we're going to drop you in. Go kill everybody and then wait for us to pick you up. That's all you got to do. Just keep saying, if, if they get bogged down, we got we could support them with uh, uh, artillery if they need it. Whatever they need. Whatever they need. Fly it in. We can fly them ammo, medevac out the wounded, keep sending them food. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very simple thing. You don't have to create a giant war. You just got to take out the assholes. Boom, bada, boom, bada, boom, bada, bam, bada, boom. Done. <laughs> you do that enough, these motherfuckers are going to quiet down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, I, I like what Israel's doing. I mean, it's fucked up. People are dying. There's no nice thing about that. There's always going to be innocents that die and women and children and all of it, and that sucks. 
But the way I look at it is, is that, look, you, let's say I lived in, and I lived here and let's say there was some asshole drug dealer out here and he was selling drugs out of an apartment here. Well, you know what? I'd end up dealing with that. That's just how it is. So that's what you have to do. <laughs> that's just how it is. Like if you're living in some village somewhere, you know, in the U.S. it's different, you know, because we have a lot of veterans, we have a lot of arms. You could take care of things like that, I suppose. I guess it's it's harder for those people over there, you know. Some group of assholes moves into your town, starts doing all kinds of nefarious shit there, and they're using you and your family as a human shield. I get, you know, what are you supposed to do? But the thing is, is like, they always want to say that it's like the radicals are a small um, percentage of the overall group of like so let's say uh, Islam. Uh, all right, if 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 the if the radicals are such a small part, why doesn't the rest of Islam take out the radicals for us? Why you know why is it that everybody else has to do their work for them? That's the problem. That's the way I see it. it bothers me. So I'm not following this 100. percent I could be speaking out of my ass. I'm not watching the news really very much anymore, uh, just because it's a bummer and there's no point to it anymore. You hear the same shit over and over and over again. I watched a few minutes of Kamala with her acceptance speech, and it's just bullshit. It's just more bullshit. It's always just nonsense. It's it's so crazy to me. She's been the vice president since 2020. Build back better. Now she's saying she's going to fix everything if she gets elected. How, who's falling for this? Democrats, obviously, but why doesn't she just do it now? <laughs> All the shit she's saying, just make it happen now. Just tell Joe, hey, just do this now. If he did and she did all the things they say they're going to do if she gets elected right now, then would she, wouldn't she just get elected? Am, am I missing something here? You know, I eat meat, so my brain works. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Next thing. This is going to be a short video today, I think. <laughs> I just had to say that. Um, I watched a movie the other day, so it's funny with me. My Netflix didn't work for about a week or two. I don't know what the fuck was going on with it. I called the cable company, so it's not us. It was a real nice gal. <clears throat> she talked me through I had to go to my settings on my TV, which I never changed, and I had to sync the Wi-Fi on the TV with the service. I don't know why, because I must have done it before when Netflix worked. But anyway, I sorted it out. I got Netflix back. <clears throat> and, you know, I look at these movies on there, and there's certain... It's hard for me with certain actors, because they've ruined it for us. De Niro comes to mind. He's a fucking jerk-off. Fuck that guy. I'm not watching any of his shit. Don't care. Um, I feel that way about Liam Neeson in particular, because I heard him say a bunch of stupid shit years ago about the Second Amendment and firearms... And that asshole has made millions of dollars, become super famous, making all kinds of movies. And in every single movie he's in, what's he doing? He's killing people with guns. So, fuck that guy and his hypocritical bullshit. It just aggravates me with these people. Say one thing, do another. It's very aggravating. Every once in a while, some movie's there and I don't want to watch it because the actor... But then I'll think better of it, and I'll watch it. And oftentimes I'm pleasantly surprised it's a good friggin' movie. Case in point is Matt Damon. Now, the thing with Matt Damon is, is like, we've always known who he is and what he thinks and what he stands by, so I can't knock him for that. I kind of respect that he feels that way. I would love to have a conversation with him about this Zen character he likes to bring up and all the other bullshit that's total revisionist history nonsense. But whatever <clears throat> he did this film i guess it's probably 10 years old or older i don't know um i just watched it for the first time last night uh the adjustment bureau watch that flick man it's pretty it, it starts off a little bit like yeah i don't know then it gets good because it gets into what i kind of think is right and what i kind of believe in a way um because i'm into the ancient astronaut theory I think that there's things going on. I think we could tap into this universal knowledge, the universe, which I think is really what God is all about. I don't think it has anything to do with religion. And in this film, you know, he's uh, 
they make it seem like in the end you find out that that's not what it's about but through the whole movie they're making you feel like you're you don't actually have free will and that there's these beings that are controlling everything with adjustments to your our lives really fun point that they make up make uh one of these beings because they admit that they're not human talks about how like when you can't find something or as little things happen that delay you uh, they're doing that on purpose because they're setting the stage like you can't talk to a certain person or you're avoiding an accident that sort that has happened to me in my life and the best example i could give you and i, I always think of this <clears throat> this happens all the time but there was one big one when i was riding motorcycles and i had a bunch of bad wrecks it's funny on one hand, I feel like the universe wanted me to ride motorcycles and then get back on a bike because I was off them for years. And then I feel like the universe wanted me to get off the motorcycles at the same time because I did have some pretty bad accidents. And on the road, you know, traffic, you know, people blowing red lights, driving into me, things like that. It wasn't me. But I remember one day I wanted to go out and I could not find my keys. And that's weird because I always put my keys in the exact same spot. There's a little caddy up here. It's a uh, bottle cap sculpture. It's probably supposed to be an African woman, and she's holding this big dish, and she's got another dish on her head, and I put the keys right there. That's where the keys always are. Keys weren't there. <clears throat> Looking high and low. Did everything. Looked in the refrigerator. Looked under the covers on the bed. <laughs> I mean, I looked everywhere. Could not find these keys. Like 15 minutes looking for my keys. And then I went back in the bathroom and looked around again, and I walked out of the bathroom, and I looked at my bed, which was made, and the keys were sitting right there on the bed. Towards the edge, dead center. Impossible for me to have missed those keys. Impossible. I looked at it. I looked under the covers. I made the bed again. I looked in the fridge. I looked everywhere. 15 minutes. There are the keys. It might not even have been 15 minutes. It might have just been five or six minutes, but it was, you know, when you're frustrated, right? Everything seems longer. Grab the keys and I go. I'm driving to where I'm going. I'm on the motorcycle. And as I'm getting to this one inter intersection, I look and there had just been this horrible car crash a few minutes earlier, just before I got there. And I realized if I had found those keys, I might be dead right now. So that's one example. There's others where this has happened to me. And it happens to us all the time. Are you paying attention? Most of us aren't paying attention. They're like, like, you might see it as a coincidence. Wow, that could have happened. Well, what this film did was they made you think like, no, no, maybe this is actually happening and being orchestrated on purpose by these beings. <clears throat> so I recommend the movie. But I thought about it. I was like, you know, I can give Matt Damon a pass. I could give people, actors that are my age and younger a pass if I've watched them come up and I already know who they are outside of being an actor. Now, it shouldn't matter, right? Most of you are going to be like, why do you care what these people think? Do you like the movies? That's all that matters. I got you. But the thing is, is like, I just, some people just aggravate me so much, I don't feel like I want to patronize them. It's the same thing with my work. When I go to meet somebody, I go to your house. You call me up, I go to look at your stuff, you tell me what you want to do, and I look around, and I talk to you, and I get to know you, size up your personality, and I'm like, okay, there's a couple different, this is a crazy thing for me to admit, but I'm admitting it, I've said it before, so it's nothing new, I choose my clients, if I take the job, if you hear me say, after we meet, that I'll take the job, and I, I'm going to do some sketches, we'll come up with some numbers, that's pretty cool, and I'll usually say to you that I chose you, and then I might even say if I really like you that what I'm about to say, which is I don't take every job that comes at me. I, if I have to not work for three or four months because the people I'm meeting are people I don't want to work for, that's just how it is. I set my life up in a way where I don't, you know, it could be hard on me for a few months. <clears throat> usually I usually have a few bucks saved up. I could sell off stuff, which is one of the reasons why I buy the stuff I buy, because that's what I do when I need money. Or I spend a little extra time in the shop and I'll make cutting boards or something, which is something else I should bring up here in a moment. So I'm just saying. Now, there's the people I will not work for. And then there's the other people that they could be a little bit annoying. And so 
I, but I might still do the job. I'll just charge him a little bit more. <laughs> so that's like a pain in the ass factor. Every guy that does what I do for a living, that works for themselves, does the same thing. They just might not admit it to you. But that's how it is, man. That's how it is. It's my life. It's the way I want to do things. If you don't like it, you don't have to hire me. So it's fine. It's my same attitude with doing these videos and getting stupid comments every once in a while. <laughs> you don't have to watch it. So that's the story with that. Uh, the other thing, I, I, th th so the cutting board thing, I've been getting these questions lately. Um, for those that don't know, I have used to make some pretty cool cutting boards. It just, they bore me and they take too much time the way that I do them. Because there's some of my boards might have 50 pieces of wood in it, and it's only this big, <laughs> you know. Because I'll mill some real thin material. Because <clears throat> I do it like a serape, right, like a Mexican blanket where there's a fade to it. And I color match things the right way, and I'll, I'll, I'll make them asymmetric sometimes, but usually I balance from the center out. And uh, I orient all the grain correct, so it's edge grain, so they don't won't warp and all that, as long as you keep them out of the water. And um, I sold them for a lot of money, but the problem is I just put so much work into them, it just wasn't worth the effort anymore. And... When I was doing them, I was also, I didn't have a lot of work going on. So it was great because I could take, I could spend some money and I could take a couple weeks and knock out 20 boards and then make some money. The thing is, is I didn't always sell 20 boards that quick. So it could take quite some time to move all those boards. And over the last month or so, I've, it just happened again yesterday. Was it this morning? I don't know, just recently, another person. But in the last few weeks, five or six different people have asked me if I had any cutting boards to sell, and I don't. And I don't intend on making them. However, um, there's a few people that I feel like deserve them. Uh, in particular, you know, that Robin Crow woman that made me the, the blanket. Although I, I don't think she'd want to take it. Robin, if you're watching, I got a, a project for you. I want to talk to you about it. I've been looking for a card again. You, you do such a good job. I wanted to see if I could either pay you for it uh, or we'll do a trade and I'll make you a really cool cutting board. Uh, you know, similar to like the, uh, yeah, what's the movie? You know, the dude. <laughs> the cardigan sweater. You know what I'm saying? With the high collar you can turn up with the big buttons on it with the pockets down here. I wonder if you could like Crochet a shoulder holster into it. <laughs> I think that'd be so cool. <laughs> so if you're watching, uh, I'll be sending you an email soon. But I'd like to hook her up. And then, you know, so I, so I might do a, a little run of cutting boards before Christmas, possibly, if I have the time. I've just been too busy working, guys, which is a great thing for me. I'd rather be working and making money on these other projects. <clears throat> so I just wanted to throw that out there. And I think that pretty much covers everything. I just, oh, the, the, the point about actors that, um, like I said, that are my age or younger, and I watch them come up, so I already know what they think, so I can give them the benefit of the doubt, or I still might watch some of their films if it's something that's really my sort of thing. But then I think of people like De Niro, who's a jerk off, and I won't watch any of his shit anymore because with him, it was before the internet and everything. So you'd watch all these movies and you could put yourself in, like, I'm the type of guy that is those type of characters in real life. You know, I don't take shit from anybody. I'm one of those types of people that you see in the movies <laughs> to a certain extent. And so I could identify with a lot of these characters. That's what piss, that's what pisses so many people off. If you're a blue collar, it's like Springsteen. It's the same thing. If you're a blue collar, like spring, every Springsteen song sounds like an anthem to blue collar, red blooded American patriots, and then you find out he's a commie. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's the same thing with De Niro. And it's okay if that's what you think. <clears throat> what aggravates people is when you got to tell us what you think consistently. And people that spend money, a lot of money, on your tickets to watch your shit, only to have, like, because Springsteen will do this in his concerts, where he starts talking about a bunch of bullshit, and people boo him and tell him to start playing his shit. <laughs> it's funny, those interactions. And it's the same thing with De Niro. So 
but you didn't know it. They faked you out this whole time, and you loved them because you loved those characters that they did, because you could identify with these characters. They were such good actors, they're great artists and singers and everything else. And then later in life, of course, now they got, they either of these guys could stop working tomorrow, and they just got millions and millions and millions. They could wipe their ass with $100 bills every day of the week for the rest of their lives and never worry about money. So they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit about you. They used you. They played on your mind to make millions of dollars. They manipulated the way you thought about everything and them, <clears throat> now they reveal who they are. Those are the people I don't like. So it's a thing, man. It's a freaking thing <laughs> for me. By the way, I'm not saying you have to think the way I do. I'm not even saying what I'm saying is the right way to be thinking about it. And a lot of you might not like anything I just said. And all I could say is, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I think. So, I'm not myself right now. This foot thing really is bugging me. It's a friggin' bummer, man. So, gotta stay off the sugar again. Oh, and I did, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I did take a big swig of apple cider vinegar a little while ago. I'm gonna have some more of that. I think that'll help with the pH in my body. Probably make this uh, go away pretty quick. So I'm hip. <clears throat> I know what's going on. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it there. I, I would like to give you guys some more entertaining things and some humor, but I'm really not myself right now because I'm aggravated. <laughs> and I got to make a call and I got to go through some paperwork over here. I got a few more things to do, but I wanted to get this out to you just to let you know what's going on. And uh, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. One last thing. The van. The van is fine. I had the Hydro Boost replaced two weeks before that. I had the timing cover done. Now, after the Hydro Boost was done, it looked like the timing cover was leaking again, but I think they spilled fluid when they did it because I wiped it down. If I'm wrong and I'm getting that little bit of oil that hangs on that, um, what is it, the crank position sensor, um, that would tell me that likely it might still, that new seal could be leaking a little bit. That's a bummer. I, 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 it's one of the reasons why you want to bring something to the shop with something like this. Uh, although I did supply the part, but it would have been the same part that they bought. So um, if that is what it is, we're going to have to figure that out. But I, it's obviously not as big of a job. I could be wrong. I think you might be able to get the seal out without having, to, without having to take the cover off. It might pop out and you might be able to pop a new one in. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. But the other thing is... Um, I've got hundreds of videos on the Astro Van, and some are advice videos. One of them did very well. Um, I don't know how many. Um, I think it's well over 20,000 views. might be 40,000 views. I don't know. But it, it's got a lot of views, my advice video. I'm wearing a blue and white plaid shirt in that video. Um, <clears throat> the van has been a journey. I bought the van knowing that I was going to be in love with what I turned it into, knowing what I could turn it into. So I'd done all my research first. So I knew with the Astro Van, it was pretty easy to turn into 4x4, four four, and then uh, you could modify it and all that. So when I bought the van, I bought the van knowing I was going to dump thousands of dollars into it. I didn't buy it thinking, let's just make keep it running good and do the mods and then go out and enjoy it. My thing is, is I want to go out and enjoy it worry-free so I replaced everything so the only thing left in this van at this point that's still factory is the engine and the steering box I think that's about it <laughs> maybe the steering linkage in the front is still in good shape that's still there but everything else man axles transmission transfer case gears uh, exhaust system, all of the sensors, rubber hoses. I mean, I guess some of the wiring, the original wire wiring harness is still in there. Um, but pretty much everything else. I'm talking about mechanically. In my mind, if you're going to buy a vehicle and do what I did or what you want to do it, you got to make that thing mechanically sound. This is just my opinion. Um, I think it's you're rolling the dice if you buy some old van and you turn it into some sort of camper van. You put all your money into building that out. and A lot of people build, put the batteries in it and build a system, electrical system, all this stuff. And then the van breaks down and you can't afford to fix the van. 
fix the van first. Make the van mechanically as sound as possible, beef it up, get the suspension right, build it for what you're going to use it for, do all that first. That's just my advice there. And that's what I did. Thing is, is as I said, it was a journey. So it was, here's what I'm doing now, here's what I'm trying now. Um, this worked, this didn't work. I did this, here's the video. Oh, three months later, I did another video because I changed it and I did something else. I might not have been as clear when I made the second video. I'm not labeling it part one and part two. So there's people making comments on some of the old videos uh, where it's not even something I'm dealing with anymore because I changed it again. So if you're watching this and you're into the van, keep that in mind. Um, I'm not upset by it. I understand it. I created this mess. <laughs> That's how it is. And I don't really mind responding to the comments. It's kind of fun. I just wish people would understand that. Uh, the other day I got a comment. It was cool because the guy's like, I understand this video is like three years old, but... <laughs> yeah, man. I don't even remember any of this shit now. And that's the thing, too. You do these things, and I've never said I was a mechanic. I've never said I was an Astro Van guru, anything like that. But that's what people think of me because I put all that content out there. And so it puts me into this thing where people think I have all these answers. And I don't have all the answers, man. I'm not right about everything. Um, I just apply logic and, you know, I figure it out. I'm mechanically minded. And I'm not afraid to try stuff and tear shit apart. And I, replacing parts is easy, you know. And the van's not done. I, I, I need to get new a new set of uh, leaf springs for the rear. I put the S10 springs on uh, a few years ago. They're okay, but a lot of Astro vans, because the gas tank is more on the uh, driver's side, it's a 27-gallon tank. I'm assuming this is why. Even the spare hangs more on that side because the exhaust runs along the passenger side. So these, these heavy things are shifted over. And so you'll see a lot of Astro vans will have a lean on the, uh, for you it would be here if you're looking at the rear, but they, they lean on the driver's side. Uh, so when I did the lift with those uh, shackles that have holes, you can adjust the height. I'm one hole up on the uh, driver's side and I'm all the way at the bottom on the passenger side and that levels out the van. Even with the new S10 springs, I still had that lean. So what I want to do is spend some of this YouTube money on uh, getting a custom set of rear springs made that will give me um, a little bit of lift. I want a little bit more lift than the rear so I can jack the front back up because ever since I put the rear bumper on, it, because now that weight is cantilevering beyond the rear wheels, so it lowered the rear end a hair. So I lowered my front end again, just to make it a little bit better there. Rear end's gonna raise with new springs, which will I'll be able to put shackle, the, the, whole, the bolts through the shackles and the springs the same on both sides. But the spring rate on the driver's side will be enough to level out the van. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is what I'm going for here. And these springs are going to be designed to be able to get my van up a little bit more, but also give me the right spring rate for the amount of weight that I'll be carrying around in the van. So it's not going to bottom out or want to twist too much on me with weight in the van when I'm doing crazy shit. All right. And I don't know what that's going to cost. I mean, that might be, that could, might cost me a couple grand. I don't know yet. <clears throat> if you're a spring shop and you're watching this, let me know. We used to have a place here called Hollywood Spring on Hollywood Boulevard. It was so cool. I think it was there since the 20s or the 30s and used to drive right up the ramp inside of it. And that was in a bunch of movies. You watch a bunch of old film noir movies. A lot of them are shot in that garage. I think The Killer Elite. Oh, what a great movie. If you haven't seen that, um, James Caan, Robert Duvall, uh, I can't think of his name. Burt, Burt Young, he's friggin' great in that. Uh, Bo Hopkins, it's a, the Killer Elite watched that movie. When they drive up in there, the shop that Burt Young owns, I'm pretty sure that's Hollywood Spring. They filmed a lot of movies in there. They're not there anymore. Then there's another place I had do springs for me. They did the front springs in my Dodge truck and I had the rear springs made at another place called Warren Spring that was south of downtown. They're not there anymore. So I guess I'm going to have to do the research and figure that out. But I'm going to get the rear springs done. Then I'm going to crank the torsion keys up again. None of this is going to happen. 
until I get those track motive axles, which are coming. I should email them soon. It's been over a month. They said it could be three or four months, but I just want to be like, hey, I'm still here. Just Also, I want to get three of those if it's possible. They said they'd send me a set. Maybe I'll buy one. I want to carry an extra one with me because I carry all the tools, including, including a torque wrench with me in case I have to swap a CV axle out in case I break one when I'm out in the woods because the CV axles are the weak link in that 4x4 system. But these new track motive axles that extend right and they're designed to work in an extreme angle <clears throat> once they come in that's what I'm doing the rear springs rear end goes up now I can jack the front end up I can have the angle and we're golden and at that point I'm gonna be in really really good shape and then I'll feel real comfortable about taking the van out in some other places keeping in mind the Astro van is not a rock crawler never wanted to be uh, you guys may have seen me do some pretty pretty crazy stuff because I record a lot of it I don't often get out of the van and set it up on a tripod and film what I'm doing. Sometimes there's somebody with me that gets out. I have gotten out and done that. Like when I got lost leaving Sarah's house last year and I went through some pretty crazy stuff and that's all on film and you guys got to see that. Um, I could have died on that one. <laughs> but um, I'm pretty careful. I, I do it slow. I'm not uh, stupid when I'm out there because I'm alone usually. Uh, but the front end of that van is just a, there's a front clip of a chassis and it's a unibody van sitting on top of that front clip and the rear end's just on the springs with an axle. So, you know, the, 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 it's so cool that Track Motive is willing to make these axles for the van because the only other option was to put a straight axle in the van and a lot of people have done that. Our boy Phil has done that. I think it's a neat thing. Here's what I deduced though which makes perfect sense. If you got yourself into a situation where you needed a, front, a straight front axle, like you needed the extra strength and all the torque and everything that you're gonna get out of that with the gearing and everything else, you're risking, you're pulling yourself out with that front wheel drive for in four by four, you're risking pulling the whole van apart at that point because it's that, unibody construction of that van is just it's got six bolts holding it to that front clip that then your axles attached to so you know you understand what I'm getting at here it's not a full frame chassis on this Astro van so I don't think it's smart to do, it's cool to do it if you want to do a straight axle and then take it out and not get crazy not do any rock crawling with it this is when you're going to break shit because you got you see the front straight axle and you think you can rock crawl in it, so you have, you got to be smarter, you know. Um, but that's my plan because to put a straight axle in the Astro van, you're going to spend eight to ten thousand dollars between parts, a kit. You're going to pay somebody to do it. You're going to try to do it yourself. What's your own time worth? Like once you start figuring out and doing the math, that's just too much money to throw into that van. I've got way more than that into it already. <laughs> so, anyhow. I guess that's about it. Sunday night chat. So this week will be cool. I've been, you know, I picked up a few things on eBay because I got money <laughs> coming in from work and whatnot. Still buying watches. This is my uh, latest acquisition. There's a couple more coming in. This is a uh, Seiko. It's a Seiko 5. I think I'm going to do a video on my Seiko 5 collection. And... I've been wanting to get an orange face watch. Orange uh, turns out to be the most visible watch like uh, when you're underwater, murky water, things like that. Now this watch is only 100 meter water resistant. It's a push-pull crown because it's just a Seiko 5. Although I do have Seiko 5s that have a locking screw down crown. I found a watch that I'm hunting right now. It's just they want five to $800 for it. There's a few that are in the lower, like, you know, three to $400, and I'm probably going to splurge on it and treat myself. It's such a crazy looking watch. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't want to be bidding against you. <laughs> but when you see it, I'm going to bring out another watch, and I'm going to put them together, and you're going to see inspiration there and where this other company got their idea. And I'm kind of excited about doing that. And it has an orange face, and I feel like... If you're going to have an orange face dive watch, this is just how I feel about stuff. I think you guys know me. Like, There's a logic that has to fit for me to enjoy things. 
it should be a real dive watch, right? Because if you're wearing an orange face dive watch and it's only 100 meter waters, this is, this is not a real dive watch. It just looks like it. If I'm going to wear an orange face watch, it's going to have a minimum of 200 meters water resistance with a locking screw down crown. And uh, so, yeah, I, I'm just friggin' weird that way, man. <laughs> in a lot of ways. I'm weird in all kinds of ways. If you haven't picked up on that yet. That's it. I'm going to go now. Um, I want to relax. I want to get, elevate my foot here and drink some more apple cider vinegar <laughs> and cook some dinner. I don't even know what I'm going to eat tonight. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. That's it. You guys, thank you for being here. I, I, I'm just blathering today. I, I don't feel good about this one, to be honest with you. But I hope I said something that some of you enjoyed. <sighs> it's going to get better. I got a fun thing. The survival kit uh, video I did. Remember that? Go back and watch it. It was like a week or so ago. This other idea I've had for a long time. That's all I'm going to say about that. It's going to be a, a, I think you guys will like it. If you, if you enjoyed that and you like pragmatically thinking and you want to have a little kit for yourself and you wonder about the best way to wear it on your person in hot weather, you're going to want to watch this video. So stick around for that. It's definitely going to happen this week. I'll let you know what happens tomorrow with the whole VA thing and all that. <clears throat> and that's it for now. You guys have a great day. Thanks again for being here. Be kind to one another. I'll catch you in the next one.